what you've done for me. Those that know it, help us sing it. How you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. What you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Oh, never. What you've done. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Oh, never, never, never forget. Never, 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 oh, never, never forget. What you've done for me, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Hallelujah. Anyone else have a praise for the Lord? Hallelujah. Go ahead, sister. Read by his name. I come to glory, revive his name. I come to glory, revive the name of the Lord. I come to glory, revive his name. I come to glory, revive his name. Glorify his name. I come to glory, revive his name. I come to glory, revive. The name of the Lord, I come to glorify His name. Help me to revive His name. Help me to glorify His name. Help me to glorify the name of the Lord. Help me to glorify His name. I come to glorify his name, glorify his name, come to glorify his name. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. We come to glorify his name. Help me to revive his name. Help me to glorify. Revive his name. Help me to glow. Revive the name of the Lord. Help me to glow. Revive his name. We come to glorify his name. Glorify. We came to glow. Revive his name. We come to glow. Revive. The name of the Lord, we come to glow, revive his name. Help me to glorify his name, glorify his name. Help me to glow, revive his name. Help me to glow, revive the name of the Lord. Help me to glow. Revive his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Mark. My sins fall away. Rising he 
justified. Oh, one day he's coming back. Oh, living in love me. Buried in carrying my sins far away. Rising in justified, pretty forever. One day he's coming back, glorious. Oh, living in love me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming back, glorious. Living he loved me. Dying, he saved me. There, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, free forever. One day, he's coming back. Glory, oh, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. There, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified us free forever. One day he's coming back. Oh, one day he's coming back. 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 One day won't be long. One day, one day, great day, happy day. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. For church themselves ready it's coming back one day one day a great day now he's coming back now he's coming back he's coming back it won't be long just hold on he's coming back He's coming back one day, a great day. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back for people, peculiar people. He's coming back. He's coming back. Great day. Oh, one day it won't be long. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, living he loved me. Then he saved me. There he carried my sins far away rising he justified free forever one day he's coming back glorious day how many of you all are looking for the return of the Lord Jesus hallelujah a prepared people for a prepared place hallelujah amen go ahead and praise him sister Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Jesus said it. Scripture has said it. Jesus said it. It's a oh, uh, let me let me clarify. Wait a minute, hold up. It's a call and response. So I say one thing, you say the same thing. All right? Okay. All right, the song says, Jesus said it. Scripture has said it. Scripture has said it. Believe on me. And out of your belly. Out of your belly. Shall flow. Flow. Jesus said it, scripture has said it, Jesus said it, scripture has said it, believe on me, just believe on me, and out of your belly, out of your belly, shall flow. another comforter. Hallelujah. Praise him, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise him. That the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. We're going to ask if you testify, please do not sing. If you sing, please do not testify. Thank you. Go ahead, sister. Tis done. I believe on the Oh, I'm 
Let him be my guide and baptize in Jesus' name and carry them the altar till the Holy Ghost came. My soul been satisfied. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Power in the name, authority in the name, healing in the name, healing in the name, salvation in the name, salvation in the name, deliverance in the name, deliverance in the name, Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 my Savior, Jesus, my healer, Jesus, my strong deliverer. Oh, Jesus, 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 my healer, my deliverer, my savior. Thank you, Jesus, for your 
saving grace where he paid me, he healed me, he saved me, revealed me with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Yeah, I get a witness. Can I get a witness? Hey. your praise. Is he worthy to be praised? He died for me. He died for you. That we can have a right to the tree of life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So say it. So say it. So say it. So say it, yeah. yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, yeah, so, yeah. He's worthy of every praise. He sacrificed for us. Anybody else got a praise right now? Right now, go ahead, Sister Donna. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise God. Better give him some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. My son. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is he worthy of your praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's a healer of all thy diseases. Hallelujah. Sister Ball, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No more stand, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. 92nd convention. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and give him some praise. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you for the day. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, I remember Sister Ball from the testimonies and for the tearing service years ago. Hallelujah. We used to have tearing service over at uh, Sister Lola Braxton. Y'all know it is Evangelist Lola Braxton. That's my Aunt Lola. Hallelujah. And we would be over there on Van Dyke Street. Amen. And Sister Ball was one of the saints that would be over there at tearing service. And God is good. Go ahead and praise him, brother. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. the Lord he is worthy to be praised Janice. praise the Lord yes give him some praise
Better give him some praise. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Let's give God some praise. Give him some praise. Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 There's a city called heaven. City called heaven. City called heaven up there. Lord, help to that city called Evan. Oh, there's a city called Evan. City called Evan. Up there. Lord, I got to make it, Lord. Help me to make it to that city. Somewhere. There's a city called Evan. There's a city called Evan up there. I want to make it Lord here to that city called Evan. to flee. Tell me who can stand before us when we call by his great name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for the praises that have gone up before him. We have already said no more stand at this time. We praise God for every praise, every testimony that's gone up before him. Because we know we have victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I love him. Do anybody in here love him? I love him. Beyond 
a shadow of all doubts that he loved me. I cannot testify of a surety that he loved me. Now you have to do that for yourself. I can only testify, I, I, I know he loved me. Reaching down in the muck and the mire, bringing me out and washing me in his blood and, and giving me of his spirit. He loved me because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Give him praise today. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Let everything that I have breath praise the Lord. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him when the sun go down. Praise him. Praise him right now. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his love. Praise him for his kindness. Praise him for his wisdom. Praise him for his knowledge. Praise him. Oh, I praise him. Thank you, Jesus. And some people, I hope you're not the kind to go to church and to become a spectator. Let everything that have breath. Now you find out whether you're in that nimble. Just take your hand and blow. If you feel in the air, you got breath. And if you got breath, you owe him a praise. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for being in our 92nd church convention. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience to know that God is still alive. And regardless of what this world is offering, God is still alive. And don't be caught up in all the whoopla. God will still keep you if you want to be kept. He will preserve you if you want to be preserved. I don't care what's going on around you. I don't care how the devil's screaming and hollering. God is still alive. How many know he's alive? The same-sex marriages all over the pages, everywhere. That don't mean nothing to God. Right in the midst of it. Insufferable, all this carnality. He can keep you right in the middle of it, all of the mess. You think I'm not going to praise him? You think I'm not going to open up my mouth? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll thank you. In Jesus' name. This time, I like for all of our first-time visitors. Do we have any first-time visitors? Any first-time, first-time being in here? We got some right over yonder. We have some gifts for our first-time visitors. We give them a New Testament. We got some, I said we got some first-time visitors here, folks. We got some first-time visitors. We got some first-time visitors. I want you, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, no, somebody else can do it, too. We got some first-time visitors. Thank God for our first-time visitors. I like for my folks to go and greet our first time visitors. We're glad to have you. We're glad you take time out of your heart, your special, and your time to come visit us. We do thank you for your visit. Like at this time, all visitors stand. All visitors stand. On behalf of my Myself and, and my wife, Dr. Clark, we want to say welcome, welcome to you. If you feel like clapping your hands, show them how we clap our hands. Show them how we, show them how we give the highest praise. Oh, y'all can do better. How we do the highest praise? Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. 
We just thank. Well, do we have any visitors from California? Do we have any visitors from Florida? We got visitors. May standing. Any visitors from Indiana? Any Indiana visitors? Illinois visitors? Any visitors from Kentucky? Any visitors from New York? Any more visitors from out of state that we miss? Amen. There, we got one from uh, Texas, Lord Jesus. Amen. Visit from Texas. Thank God. And we praise God for all of our visitors. And this truly is the day that the Lord has made. And we're just glad about this Jesus. Amen. You, you may be seated. At this time, we want to take up an offering. We are doing a lot of work and renovating in this church. And they we have water damage. They gave us some, but they didn't give us enough. They want to collect the main thing, but we still need a lot of help. And so we want to take up a good offering tonight for, for this church. And we ask that you would make a sacrifice. If everybody in here will make a sacrifice and give $20, you won't miss it. I guarantee you won't miss it. And one thing I can tell you, deacons and trustees, come please. I guarantee you, you won't miss it. And you need an envelope, the ushers will serve you. Just raise your hand. You can put the offerings in envelopes. I'm just so glad about this Jesus. And the song goes that he never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Thank you, Jesus. Make a sacrifice. I guarantee you, God will never let you outgive him. If you're so spared, what's going to happen? And we have what they call a debit machine over to him. My left and to your right, we take debit cards. Amen. So make a sacrifice. If you want to give more, that's all right, too. But we've been in business now 92 years convention, and 94, the church has been in, in, in existence 94 years. Six more years, it'll be a, a what? And we got Sister B. Thay in here, and she's a hunter. <laughs> Sister Alice B. Thay. We're going to hear from Sister Mama Alice in a little while, in, but we want to get business taken right now. But we're glad to have her make, and she came all the way by herself on the train. A hundred years old, and still walking, still driving a car. That, the little boy said, that's bad. <laughs> and she's still this highly favored with the Lord. If you serve the Lord, he'll bless you. Are you hear what I say? If you serve the Lord, I'll guarantee you. And we got a lot of folks here 90 some years old, and they ain't telling it either. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. This time... Thank you. 
said, so where is she? Where's my Faith? Faith Madeline, where is she? Oh, there she is in the wheelchair. Yeah, there she is. She is the widow of the late Elder Register, Elder Tom Register. We're glad to have her. There she is. Yeah. Amen. Sister Register. Some of the older saints remember Elder Register. Your national evangelist preached all over. We're glad to have her out tonight. Amen. At this time, let everyone please stand. Everyone. Everyone, please stand that can stand and will stand. Jesus Christ. Ursha, start him out from the rear. Jesus, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank you one and all for the offering that you have given in Jesus' name. This time I, I would like for all, all pastors to stand, all pastors to stand on the pulpit and and please give him your name, where you're from. I, I see my, we start out there. My friend, Pastor, Pastor Ellis from 
destiny. Amen. Give her another applause. <laughs> Pastor Nate Edwards has only faith ministry West First Michigan Let's be bold Any more pastors? Amen Amen We're glad to overlook anyone. We just thank God for you that take time out of your busy schedule to come in to worship with us. And I feel there will be a blessing here tonight. And after the preaching, don't leave because after, after the, the preaching is over in the altar call, we're going to be praying for the sick. Bishop Singleton of uh, Inglewood, California, we'll be praying for the sick. If you got problems and thank you, I think he let the man of God put his hands on you. He prayed for folks and, and things just happened. He believes that God can do anything. I do too. But he has that gift. And he, he and it works. How many know healing works? Never. I say this, never, 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 never give up on God. Did you hear what I said? Never. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the problem, the situation, the challenge. Never give up on God. Never. Can you say never? Never. Never. Give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. At this time, we're going to have the, the Clinton Street Greater Bethlehem Temple Youth Corps.
still works. The blood 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 still works. It'll work through cancer. It'll work through diabetes. The work with your family. It'll work through your children. It'll work through your children. The blood still works. The blood still works. The blood still works. Cincinnati, Ohio. Let us stand and receive Ella Ursha. in perspective I only want the folks that have experienced the power of the blood to praise his name
Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And say, one day when I was lost. Come on, look at him and say, one day when I was lost. Now look at your other neighbor and say, he died upon the cross. I know that I know that I know. I know that I know that I know. Take a little while and praise his name. Everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Come on, let's lift up our hands and praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift up our hands and our voices and praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. There is a cloud of God's glory in this place. Hallelujah. I came to praise his name. I came to praise his name. Hallelujah. I feel like praising his name. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm thankful to be in his house. I'm grateful to worship my God with my brothers and sisters today. I've come to praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My soul says hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me sane. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I just can't stop praising his name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The scripture says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name shall be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful honor to be here at this wonderful place, Bethlehem Temple. Clinton Street, Detroit, Michigan. Bishop Clark, First Lady Clark, God bless you in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much for once again bestowing such an honor uh, to me to be able to be in this wonderful church. And I tell you that the gentleman standing uh, behind me, uh, the bishop, and angel of this church is a Christian gentleman. 
and we thank God for him and his wonderful wife and family and uh, we give honor to the Lord for their influence in the kingdom of God and this great temple has means so much to so many and to be able to be here in this uh, conference again is is a great honor to me and uh, I always enjoy being able to be with my good friends the Clark family and all of our wonderful ministers this fine assembly amen I'm thankful uh, Minister Aaron Williams, Minister Benjamin Rodriguez are with me. These are wonderful young preachers of the gospel. Amen. And uh, I, I feel, I feel uh, blessed of the Lord tonight. And I feel assigned uh, to this service. And I believe the Lord has, I know that the Lord has given me something to share tonight. Anytime that you stand in a, a desk appointed to, to minister the word, it is, a, it is a solemn responsibility. Regardless of how many times you do it, it's a solemn responsibility. There is somebody tonight that is here, someone that may not be here, but is hearing these words uh, the Lord is reaching for you and uh, I take that very serious and it might be that you hear it three years from now on a compact disc or broadcast of some sort but the Lord will be reaching for you through the ministry of his word tonight praise God and so we want to look into the word of the Lord I I invite your attention, if you will, to the book of Genesis. To the book of Genesis. Praise the name of our God. From the book of Genesis and the 28th chapter. Genesis chapter 28 and verse 10. The scripture says, and I'm going to read a few verses here. Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. He dreamed. Behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. Behold, I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and listened to this particular part of our passage. 
He took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. I want to preach by the help of the Holy Ghost, by the grace and anointing of God. On this particular passage, that he took these pillows and set it up for a pillar. And I will entitle this message, From Pillow to Pillar. From Pillow to Pillar. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy word. Your word is a lamp to our feet. It is light to our path. Your word is forever settled in heaven. May it forever be settled in our hearts tonight that we might not sin against thee. I pray in the name of Jesus for your anointing personally and upon this wonderful congregation of people who have gathered together to hear your word. Help us in the name of Jesus Christ to receive your word and to grow in it in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you in the name of the Lord. I want to talk to you about, about pillars. We need pillars. You know what I mean when I say pillars of the church. Pillars of the assembly. We understand the need for these for these things because architecturally speaking they cause the building to stand the building in which we worship tonight we are grateful for these pillars that stand at attention these are beautiful columns but they are not merely for decoration they serve a very significant purpose in the construct of this facility. And this is true of this building and it is true of the kingdom of God. In this conference, this year, 2015, pertains to the matter of building his kingdom. Kingdom building. I want you to know that God has graced me personally with the influence in my life of pillars of the church. Pillars that even today may not fully know how instrumental they were in helping to form my faith in Jesus Christ. They don't know because I haven't had opportunity, I haven't perhaps taken opportunity to adequately summarize for them just how much their faithfulness stood out to me. Just how much their worship inspired me. Just how grateful I am that they didn't backslide when they were tempted to do so. I haven't taken the time to express to them, some of them, my gratitude for how often they sought the face of God in the face of severe, deep adversity in their lives. My mind goes back to Brother Kerry Rivers, a man of God in our church in Kokomo, Indiana. My father pastored there 20 years. God placed us there and allowed my brother and my sister and myself to be raised up in that assembly, surrounded by those good godly people. He allowed their influence and their prayers to be a constant source of strength and inspiration to us. One of the pillars of that assembly 
was a man by the name of Cary Rivers. But the Cary Rivers was a prince of a man. Kind, strong, focused his life on the Lord. Cary Rivers didn't come to church by himself. His car always had people hanging out of it. He'd come pulling up into the church parking lot and people who couldn't find a way to church found a way to church through Brother Cary Rivers. It put him out, but he was willing to do it. It was inconvenient but he knew they needed to be in the presence of the Lord. I saw that, Brother Rivers. I observed that. I was a child, but, but I made note of it. I saw this man. In fact, I remember Brother Rivers, the way he would worship God. While people were worshiping God, Brother Carrie Rivers would walk around and just lift up his hands unto the Lord praise God and worship God and magnify God and he'd just walk around he'd walk around the front of the church and up the aisles and just eyes fixed upon the Lord and hands would shake under the power of God and he would praise the Lord and praise the Lord I walked in one time into his Sunday school class I didn't know anybody was in there I heard a noise and when I walked in there lay Brother Rivers on the floor praying and calling upon God and calling out the names of the children in his class I'm talking about a pillar of the assembly, a pillar of the church, somebody who was willing to pay a price, somebody who was willing to lay his own life to the side and concentrate on the needs of others. What many people didn't know about Brother Kerry Rivers is that to serve the Lord cost him dearly. His wife told him he was crazy for serving God. She told him that if he was going to begin to serve the Lord, he would have to make a choice. That she was willing to break up their home in order to keep him from serving God. He said, Don't put me in that position. Because I've made up my mind that for the rest of my days I will serve the Lord. God who has made me, God who has saved me, God who brought me out. Don't put me in that position. I'm, I'm talking about pillars who make up their mind. That all that matters is Jesus. That I'm going to heaven and I'm so glad. You can tell the world about this. You can tell the nations I'm blessed. Tell them that Jesus has come. Hallelujah. Go tell it on the mountain. Tell it in the valleys low. Oh, thank God. I, I'm, I'm talking about pillars. My mind goes back to Sister Judy Ray who, who God again brought out of darkness. You didn't want to meet Sister Ray when she didn't have the Holy Ghost. When Sister Ray didn't have the Holy Ghost, she was rough. She used to ride around in the motorcycle games and every once in a while, even when the Holy Ghost was in her, she, you got a little reminder that Sister Ray didn't play games. She was one of the ministers in our children's church. I was a small child. And Sister Judy Ray would preach to us. And she put in us the fear of God. And she put in us a love for God. And she taught us how to pray for people and how to lay hands upon people. And, and she told us how to, how to do it in decency and how to do it in order. But how to see the work of God operate in a person's life. Hallelujah. People don't know the kind of difficulties she went through in life because when it was time to go to the house of God, Sister Ray was at the house of God.
And she had a particular kind of shout. I remember the way the pillars shouted in worship. She had a particular kind of shout. Her hands would begin to move like this. She'd go up and down and back and forth, and her hands would go. I don't know what. I, I thought she was trying to start a fire. Fire shut up in her bones. just. Pretty. But when Sister Ray started doing that, you knew something was about to happen in the Holy Ghost. I remember Brother Dellen O'Brien. Brother Dellen O'Brien would sit on about the fifth row of the church. And, and, and when the Holy Ghost would begin to move, Brother Brian was a very docile personality, a very discreet and, and, and reserved personality. But when the Holy Ghost would begin to move, Brother Brian would, would, it was almost like it wasn't even him. He would leap up out of his seat. And he would do something in that middle aisle. I don't know what. It was all kind, some kind of a move he had. His feet were going all which directions. He was turning about, and then he would sit back down. And when Brother Brian did that, you knew that there was a sound coming from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind. In fact, Brother Brian became so ill with the cancer that eventually took his life in his older age that he couldn't come to church. And he said to his family, he said, I must go to the house of God. He was so weak, he couldn't move. He could barely lift up his head, but they carried him into the building, sat him down in his seat where he always sat, and he laid there slumped over. But when the saints began to pray for the Lord to have his way, Brother Brian, or the Holy Ghost in Brother Brian, lifted him up out of that seat. And one last time, he moved about in that middle aisle, feet going all which directions, and then sat back down in his seat. It was like the Lord reminding us, I still have all power. I thank God for the pillars of the church where I grew up. I came not only from a wonderful church family, I came from a wonderful family. I thank God for my family, and I thank God for the heritage, and I don't take it for granted. I'm blessed. I don't know why, but I'm blessed. I don't deserve it, but I'm blessed. And, and, and some have were, may remember some of the members of my family, my grandfather and my great-grandfather who preached the gospel uh, in this nation and around the world and, and God used them mightily and greatly but they, they weren't the only pillars of the family there were some, some uh, lesser known pillars of the family my great grandmother Habib was the lady who signed the papers that allowed Calvary Tabernacle in Indianapolis, Indiana to have a building in the 1940s she signed the papers and put herself on the line to make sure that the church had a building that they could build and worship God. Great, great grandma French didn't have that kind of financial capacity, but she knew how to pray. And great, great grandma French was the prayer warrior of the church. And when somebody needed prayer, they called on Sister French. And Sister French lived about three doors down from the church. And when she got the call that somebody was coming to the church and needed prayer, she would start praying in her living room. And she would get herself together, come out the front door, and when she burst through that front door, she was already talking in tongues. And when she would have a break from talking in tongues, all people would hear her say is, I plead the blood of Jesus. 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 Blood of Jesus. More times than not, before she arrived to lay hands on the person, they were already healed. I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, in this 92nd year kingdom building conference of Greater Bethlehem Temple, Clinton Street, Detroit. If we've ever needed pillars in the assembly, we need pillars in the assembly now. If we have ever needed people who are willing to lay down their life for the cause of Jesus Christ, we need it now. People who are willing to part with possessions 
to see the church proceed. We need it now. People who are willing to pray and pray and pray some more. We need it now. This generation requires a church that is no longer complacent. Can I preach for just a little while? In the name of the Lord, I'm going to have to rebuke the complacency of the church in this last day. We have learned how to be comfortable in this ungodly world. Somehow we've got to be reminded this world is not our home. We are just passing through. Somewhere along the line, we found it convenient to climb social ladders and political ladders and corporate ladders. And we think the blessings of man equal the blessings of God. There was a day when the saints of God moved mountains. There was a day when the saints of God would bring down strongholds, cast down imaginations, stand in the gap, preach the gospel without fear, without favor. We need a return of the pillar. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 2015, listen, the tragedy of 2015, as sinful as our world is, the tragedy of 2015 is not the sinfulness of our world. It is the complacency of the church. Our world is sinful and it is sad and America is on a spiral and it is sad and the whole world is in this mindset of turning against God and I know it's a part of prophetic fulfillment but you're going to have to decide are you going to be a part of the great falling away or are you going to be a part of the great revival because God is calling his remnant together for this last day of Holy Ghost outpouring Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. I'm talking about a day when saints believed that you should be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'm talking about a day when the believers believed that you should run and not be weary. That you should be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, in due season, in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. I'm talking about a day when believers believed that if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you aren't fit for the kingdom. Well, we've learned how to be holy and carnal at the same time. We've learned how to be backslidden and let nobody know about it. We've learned how to act like a Christian instead of be Christ-like. We've learned how to trick the world. We've learned how to deceive ourselves. There are people sitting under the sound of my voice. You know far more about what's going on on your television than what goes on in this Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus, I feel an unction of the Holy Ghost tonight that I've got to preach an urgent message to the church. We're not living in happenstantial days any longer. These are days when we can play games any longer. Oh God. Government has become corrupt. The world has become immoral. Churches' violence is filling our streets. That was bad enough. Now they're trying to fill our churches with violence. What are we talking? We're talking about the last days. We're talking about the days of Noah. We're talking about the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. When the Son of Man returns to this earth. And the, and the real tragedy is that we got Christians playing games. Apostolics trying to decide whether they're really going to serve God or not. People who have bought into the lies of this world. People who have drifted into the haze of this culture's hypnosis. And you've begun to believe the lies of the devil instead of the truth of God. We need somebody to pray through. 
through. We need somebody to break through. We need somebody to stand up as a pillar. A pillar of the church. A pillar of the assembly. Somebody who says I'm not stopped. I'm not going to stop being faithful. I'm not going to stop praying. I'm not going to stop worshiping. I'm not going to stop being at the house of God. I'm not going to stop laying hands on the sick. I'm not going to stop believing the truth. I'm not going to be carnal. I refuse. I refuse to be offended. I refuse to hate my brother. I refuse to hold a grudge against my sister. Why? Because I'm a pillar in this church. Those pillars that I described, they didn't know that that little boy observing their life was going to grow up to be a preacher of the gospel and would draw on what he observed in them when he faced challenges. They were just serving the Lord, living holy. You don't think they had battles? You don't think they had temptations? But they fought those battles and they resisted those temptations because the blood still works because the name still has power hallelujah I want to preach to you tonight this man Jacob this man Jacob was running for his life he was running for his life from his brother Esau who said that I will kill you you can count on that that was the last thing that he heard his brother Esau say I will kill Jacob. And Jacob ran for his life until he couldn't run any longer. I'm preaching to some people who have been running from problems in your life. Running from situations that you needed God to deliver you from. And Jacob came to a place when he could no longer run. He said, I have to lay down. Vulnerable though I may be, I've got to lay down. Now, the Bible says that that rock followed them, and that rock was Christ. And Jacob looked around and found, wouldn't you know it, a stone and made it a pillow for himself. He found rest in his wilderness in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you today that regardless of what you're up against, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. God has a rest for you. He is your comforter. He is your savior. He is your healer. He is your redeemer. He is your deliverer. And there is a rest for you. Enter into his rest. Jacob entered into the rest of God. He set that pillow out, that stone out, for a pillow and in that moment and for that span of time God provided a place of rest for Jacob Jacob laid his head down upon that stone for a pillow and the Bible says that he dreamed a dream can I tell you when you enter into the rest of God it is not so you can retire it is not so you can somehow enter into some complacency. It is so you can begin to see visions of God. It is so God can begin to take you away from what was selfish purposes, selfish ambitions, and he can now lead you into his divine will for your life. Jacob sees a ladder that the Bible says it, it, it started on the earth. That's where it starts. It doesn't matter where you are. God will send the ladder to wherever you are. Glory. Can I preach that for just a moment? Some folks in the muck and the mire, won't anybody get down there with you? But God will send the ladder down to where you are. Oh, hallelujah. He'll put that ladder next to your cancer bed. He'll put that ladder next to your bankruptcy court. He'll put that ladder next to your drug addiction. He'll put that ladder next to your bar stool. Wherever you are, God will send the ladder. You can get a hold of the rungs of that ladder wherever you are. 
and begin to climb into the glories of God. Jacob saw angels ascending and descending upon the ladder. I never knew exactly why that was, why they were going up and down upon the ladder. I thought it may be for demonstration, but that's not how God operates. God doesn't just show off. There was business being transacted. Angels ministering spirits coming and going, ministering to the heirs of salvation. There was work being done, and he watched the work of God God being done as the angels ascended and descended upon the ladder and God spoke into his life God was at the top of that ladder and God said I am the Lord God of Abraham I am the God of Isaac the place where on you lie is your place wherever you place your feet it's yours in your seed there shall be blessing all the families of the earth shall be blessed from your family hallelujah blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you this is my promise to you Jacob wakes up from that dream saw the glory of God he says surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not this is exactly what happens to people sometimes they run from their most fiercest fears they run for their life they think that all is hopeless and all is helpless and all hope is gone and they run to a place only to find out that the Lord is in this place. And I tell somebody, I don't know what you're going through, but I'll tell you this, the Lord is in that place. I don't know what you're dealing with, but the Lord is in that place. I don't know what kind of fear is going on. I don't know what bad decision you make, who you deceived, or how wrong you are. The Lord is in that place. Surely, surely the Lord is in this place. And I didn't know about it. But I've come to alert somebody. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. He said, I thought I was by myself, but the Lord is in this place. I thought I was by myself alone and afraid, but the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. I thought that nobody cared, but the Lord is in this place. I thought Esau was going to find me and kill me, but surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. Surely, surely, I didn't know it, but surely, I, I didn't believe it, but surely, nobody told me, but surely, the Lord, the Lord showed up into this place. Glory, hallelujah, I want you to know he's with you right now. He didn't bring you to this place of rest to extinguish you. He brought you to this place of rest to comfort you, to give you direction for your future. Lay your head down now on the rock. I've often wondered about that. I thought, you know, if I was looking for a pillow, I wouldn't pick up a rock. I really have. I've thought about it and I thought, you know, I think what I would do is just not use a pillow at all. If all I had was a rock, I would just use my arm and lay, you know. But when you're talking about God, God can change his consistency to whatever we need him to be in that moment. And if we need a cushion for our head to fall upon, God who is strong as a rock, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let me lay my head down upon you. There is a soft spot in God 
where anybody can lay their head and find comfort. There's a sweet spot. There's a tender heart in God where anybody, doesn't matter where they've been, doesn't matter what they've done, doesn't matter what kind of problems they've gotten themselves into, what kind of deception they've engaged in. God says, I'm here so you can rest. Lay your head down on me and rest. Glory! Glory! Come on. You know why you're shouting? Because you remember when you were in that moment of deep despair and your family didn't want anything to do with you and your friends turned their back on you. But God said, Here I am! Here I am! Hallelujah. Lay your head down. Lay your head down. And rest upon that. Upon that pillow. The rock becomes your pillow. And gives you rest. Hallelujah. Lay, lay down your worry. Lay down your strife. Lay down your depression. Lay down your concern. Lay down your fear. Lay down your doubt. Lay down your addiction. Come on, in the name of Jesus. I know, I know. You know what? Because you remember when you were hung over and God was still your pillow. You remember when you were about to overdose and God was still your pillow. He gave you a soft space to land upon. Come on, you know you should be dead. You know we should be six feet under this ground right now. We know our obituary should have already been written. But God, who is rich in mercy. But God, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. That's why we praise him. That's why we praise him. That's why we lift him up. That's why we magnify his name. God made himself what you needed him to be. He, he said, you need love. I am love. You need peace. I am peace. You need joy. I am joy. Lay your head down. Enter into my rest. We know what that feels like to lay down upon the mighty hand of God who cups himself just right to fit the mold of our weary head. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I want somebody right now who needs some rest to hear the word of the Lord. He'll hold you up. He'll uphold you and sustain you. You're fighting a fight that God has already won. Lay your head down. And rest. Jacob woke up. He woke up. He woke up from that dream and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And then he said, How dreadful. 
is this place this is none other but the house of God and the gate of heaven let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God see when you finally wake up you lay your head down and you're so tired and you're so weary from your sinfulness and from the labors of your life from your flesh doing everything its own way when you wake up you realize how dreadful I almost died I almost lost my mind I shouldn't even be here right now I almost lost it all see, see people don't like to talk about the fear of God anymore but the pillars understood the fear of God there is a healthy fear of the Lord it is the fountain of life the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear the Lord you do this you do this I won't do it right now you do this on your own time you look up all of the references to the fear of God and you'll realize every blessing that comes our way comes through the fear of God this is how the fear of God operates. It's when you realize what God could have done but didn't do. When you realize that I, you are in his hands and he will bless whom he will bless and he will have mercy upon whom he will have mercy and he will have compassion on whom he will have compassion and he could crush you if he wanted to crush you and who's going to call him in on the carpet he could break us if he wanted to break us he could cast us aside if he wanted to cast us aside you read Psalm 51 David was encountering the fear of God when he said cast me not away from thy presence he came to a first hand up close personal encounter in knowing what God is capable of doing should he decide to do it but God who is rich in mercy has chosen instead to forgive me to love me to wash me clean to take my sin not only take it away take it upon himself that's how the fear of God works it's not that you walk around afraid of God it's when you realize oh, 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 what he can do and then once fear is firmly the fear of God is firmly established in our soul and he chooses to love us and give us mercy and compassion instead it's a healthy reverence and a healthy gratitude and a healthy thanksgiving thank you Jesus thank God for the blood thank God for the blood thank God thank God thank God thank God for the for the blood how dreadful is this place this is nothing but the house of God and the gate of heaven and then he looked back at that stone that was a pillow and he changed its position and turned it into a pillar would stand the test of time and in the middle of a place called Luz or Luz depending on how you pronounce it and if it is in fact Luz that would make the inhabitants of that place losers <laughs> Jacob showed up as a loser 
But when he got in touch with God, he said, this is not a place where losers live any longer. I'm going to change the name of this place. I'm going to take what was once my pillow, turn it into a pillar. No longer is this a place where losers live. This is a place of victory. This is a place of rejoicing. This is the house of God. When he came back to that spot, he came back and renamed it El Bethel, the God of the house of God. He came to that same pillar and he began to magnify the God who had kept his promises. He began to glorify the God who kept his word. You hear what I'm telling you? There are a lot of Christians who have, who have rested but have fallen asleep. And all they can do is live in this position of sleep. They don't know that day is breaking and it's time to wake up Put the pillow in perspective. It's a pillar now. It's a landmark now. It's a memorial now. You got work to do. Places to go. People to impact. Lives to change. It's time to turn what was a pillow into a pillar. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Don't you live on the old thing God did for you many years ago. Get up and say, thank God for what he did. That will always be a pillar in my life. That will always be a landmark in my life. But I've got to move on to see what the end's going to be. To see the power, the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. God, God didn't save you. God didn't save you to be pitiful or pathetic. There's a, there, there, there's a, there's a fine line between pitiful and being pathetic. Pitiful's kind of cute sometimes. Pathetic, that doesn't work out so well. God didn't save us to be pitiful or pathetic. God saved us to be powerful and prophetic. Hallelujah, God saved us in the name of Jesus. I'm preaching to somebody right now. It's time that you say, you know what? I went through a trial. I almost lost my life. Yes, Esau tried to kill me. Yes, depression almost took me under. Yes, my problems and my shortcomings and my idiosyncrasies, they almost did me in. People had it in for me. But that was then and this is now. God lifted me up. God set me free. God brought me out without a doubt. Say my soul made me whole and I'm ready. To do what God has called me to do. This, this faith, this mindset, this, this is what makes a pillar out of you. Glory. When you move beyond. You don't know what I've been through, Pastor Urshan. I, I, you know, it's all right. You're right. I don't. I don't know. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, let me, let, me, let me explain that. Let me put that in perspective. You see, the scripture is very clear. Weeping may endure for a night. He didn't say weeping can endure for a night. You see, it's like your teacher. When you go to your teacher and you say to your teacher, teacher, may, or teacher, can I get a drink from the water fountain? And the teacher looks at you and says, may I get a drink from the water fountain? Because yes, you can. You are perfectly physically capable of going and getting a drink from the water fountain. The question is, will I permit you to get a drink from the water fountain? And no, you may not. Go sit down. God said weep. He didn't say weeping can endure for a night. If he would have said weeping can, he would have said weeping can endure forever. Weeping can endure for a night, 
two nights, three nights, a week, a month, a year, a decade. Weeping can endure your whole children's lifetime. Your weeping can endure as long as you live past when you were hurt. Weeping can endure forever if you let it, but what God was saying is weeping is permitted to endure for a night. In other words, I know you're human. I know your frame. I remember that you are dust. I created you. You need to get it out. You need to let it out. Go ahead and grieve. Go ahead and let it all out, but dry it up soon, baby, because joy is coming in the morning. The sun is about to break over the horizon. Come on, in the name of Jesus, somebody's been crying for a long time and God said, joy, 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 unspeakable, unspeakable joy. Come on, you've been crying over things that happened 20 years ago. Crying over things that happened 10 years ago. Crying over people who hurt you. Crying over things that didn't go your way. God said, you laid on that pillow long enough. Get up, turn it into a pillar, and be strong in the church. some pillars who can stand up and say yes God is a healer yes God is a deliverer yes God is holy doesn't matter how much things become unholy God continues to be holy the blood still works in the name of Jesus come on I need a pillar right now in the name of the Lord. Can I, can, I, can I make a plea on behalf of some young people right now? Elders, we need pillars in the assembly. Now let me say something to the young people. Young people, guess what? You're the pillars now. You're the pillars now. Every time somebody from a senior generation passes on, it grieves me. It saddens me because another pillar has moved off the scene on into glory, into a great cloud of witnesses. What I want to know, is there a young adult, is there a young person who's going to stand up and say, I love Jesus more than I love this culture? I want to know if there's a young person who's going to say, I love Jesus more than I love my own life. Come on, hear the word of the Lord. You either love me and hate your life or you hate me and you love your life. You hear what I'm saying right now? You must deny something. You will either deny Jesus or you will deny yourself. Something will be denied. You can't serve two masters. You got to make up your mind. Come on, you can't be in the church on Sunday and in the world on Monday. Hypocrisy is not normal. Oh, I know it's normal in the modern day church, but it's not normal in the kingdom of heaven. And in this earth, all things are going to pass away. You better get a hold of something true, something sure, something steadfast, and be a pillar in this church. I need somebody to stand with me right now. Stand with, I mean stand with me. Put your feet on the ground. Hands in the air. In the name of Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. You're going to be a pillar somewhere. You're either going to be a pillar in the church or you're going to be a pillar in this culture. Lot's wife chose to be a pillar of salt because she couldn't get her eyes off of the world she loved. Do you remember Lot's wife? Do you know who I'm talking about when I say Lot's wife? I want some young people to hear me right now. Some of you know more about this culture than you know about the scriptures. 
That's got to change. You got to hide his word in your heart. Lot's wife couldn't get her eyes off of Sodom and Gomorrah. She missed too much about the world she was leaving behind. We have fallen in love with this world. We have become carnal. We have become worldly. But the word of God rebukes us from that. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I want somebody right now to lift up your hands to heaven. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, make me strong. Lord, make me strong. In this house, make me strong. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Right now, lift up your hands. Right now, lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Come on, can we, can we do a little something, church? Come on, can we repent right now? Come on, are we too holy that we don't need to repent anymore? Can we all repent right now? All across this building, can we have collective repentance in the name of Jesus? Lord, forgive me. Don't repeat after me. You pray your prayer. Hallelujah, you can hear me, but you pray your prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my iniquity. Cleanse me of any backslidden tendency in my soul. Wash me clean from every impurity of my spirit. Cleanse me, Lord. Help me to know truth. Help me to know your word. Help me to know righteousness. Help me to hide your word in my heart. God, I don't want to sin against you. I don't want to fall in love with this world. Lord, I want to love you. I want to love holiness. I want to have a love of the truth in my heart. Give me your spirit again, Lord. Let it fill me up to overflowing. Renew my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Purge me with his up. I shall be clean. Wash me. I shall be whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus, my God, have mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost is at work in this house right now. The Holy Ghost is at work in this house right now. Come on, God is lifting you up from your place of sleep and slumber and he's raising you up to be a mighty man of valor a mighty woman of valor in this last day come on in the name of Jesus he's going to fill you up to overflowing come on in the name of Jesus lay aside every weight and every sin that doth so easily beset you run with patience the race that is set before you Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I need some young people who will come forward and take a step of bold faith and say, I'm not playing games. I'm not playing games. I will be in my generation a man of God, a woman of God. I need that to happen right now. I need some young people to come forward. Come on, this is a church of great history. This is an assembly of wonderful history. But we're talking about the future right now. We're talking about the future right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus, plant your feet in the soil of this city and say in the name of the Lord, I'm going to change through the power of prayer and through faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to change the plight of my city. I'm going to do it because God has empowered me to do it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Come on, that's it as you come. Lift up your hands and cry aloud. Come on, lift up your hands and cry aloud. Come on, that's it. Let the Holy Ghost do a work right now. Yes, yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on.
on, I want you to begin to pray prophetic prayers right now. Pray prophetic prayers right now. Lift up your voice and pray a prophetic prayer over yourself right now. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Lord, I thank you that I have the victory. Lord, I praise you that I have the victory. I thank you that you made, that you made me the man of God that I need to be. I thank you for purifying my spirit. I thank you for purifying my mind. I thank you for purifying my motive. I thank you for cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for giving me strength of my soul. I thank you for giving me a fortitude in my faith. Come on, that's it, pray a prophetic prayer. Come on, elders, I want you to reach forth your hand right now and pray over these young people in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it, in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it, reach forth your hand right now and pray over them in the name of the Lord. Let me tell you, let me, let me, let me tell you something, let me, let me just tell you something. This generation of young people are facing challenges like the world has never seen. We are facing challenges in this generation that, that, that are unprecedented and unparalleled. That should not frighten you because the Lord is with you. But you're gonna have to be sold out to him. There are not gonna be any wishy-washy Christians that are gonna survive. None of this game playing that goes on sometimes. None of this, I'm this on Sunday, but I'm this on Tuesday going on. It's got to be, Lord, I am with you even unto the end. Come on, I want some young people that are willing to go to the cross with Jesus like John the Beloved right now. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, make me into your image. Make me into your image. Come on, saints of God, all across this building, begin to cry out to God. Begin to cry out to God. To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you To worship you I live To worship you I live I live to worship you To worship you, I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Come on, somebody, lift up your hands and say it to it. Oh, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Come on, lift up your hands in this house and make it your prayer, make it your prayer. Yeah. Oh, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. In the name of Jesus. Who shall da da bohaya? In the name of the Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now, very deeply, very powerfully. There's some people right now making some fresh commitments to God. You've got some weights in your life and you need to lay them down tonight, right now, in the name of the Lord. Listen to me, listen. The world needs you to do it. The church needs you to do it. 
The church needs you now to be a pillar. The church needs you now to be an example of the believers. You thought you, thought you were able to get by because the church has been strong and the church has been steady. Listen, God is telling you, listen, it's time in your generation. I need you to now come on with me and follow me and be empowered and be equipped and to lay down every sin and the weights that doth so easily beset you. Come on, lift up your hands with me and do it right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus, as we sing this song, the Spirit of the Lord is going to move in this house. As the Spirit moves, I want you to begin to let the Spirit of the Lord move upon you in the name of Jesus. Ha! Shuka! Yamamamaha! In the name of Jesus. Elaboko Sandoramahaya! Yes, Lord, that's it. Reach out to him. Reach out to him. Come on, that's it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. somebody nearby and just lay your hand on their shoulder and pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray fervently for them because they're going through something you don't even know what they're going through. Hallelujah. Come on in the name of Jesus. The enemy is trying to turn us into soft Christians. The enemy is trying to turn us into soft Christians. He's trying to lull us to sleep in this day of demise. But I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it, that's it. Pray for them, pray for them. Pray the prayer of faith over them. Pray over their mind. Pray over their soul. Pray over their spirit. Come on, that's it. Ha-ya-bokosha. Yes, be strong in the Lord. Come on, pray God's strength. Thank you, Lord. Is anyone that have not wanted more of Christ, you can be baptized in Jesus' name. We have water. We have clothing. Someone to baptize you. Is there one? 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 Will you please, we want to make the altar call. There's somebody need Jesus. You've got to be born again of water and spirit. Is there one to want to be baptized? Yeah. 
There's two want to be baptized. Oh. Is there another? Oh, yeah. We have water, we have clothing, and someone to baptize you. Where are you? Where, where, where? Where are you? To worship you, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. Where are you? You must be born again. Oh, yeah. You've got to be born of water and spirit. We've got two. Is there one more? They go down in the watery grave. Go down in Jesus' name. And rise to walk in the newness of life. And God will give you of his spirit. Where are you? Where is the man, woman, girl, or boy? Won't you come? We want you. We need you. This is the house of God. The spirit of Christ is in this place. And you need more of God. Where are you? You need the Holy Spirit. It's not enough just to have him around you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. We're looking for pillars. that want to be a pillar in my God's house. Come on. Get up, come on. Yes, it'll help you. It'll give you strength. It'll encourage you. The presence of Christ in your life. Where is that man? Where's the woman? You've tried everything else. Why not give God a chance in your life? Oh, I'm so glad I got that Holy Ghost. Anybody here got that Holy Ghost? I mean, I, I'm talking about showing up got that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, how many didn't come? But you want the saints to pray for you that God might save you before it's too late. Just raise your hand and say, pray for me. There's a hand back there. There's another hand. Is there another hand over there? There's another hand. Oh, friend. There is no substitute for Christ. When I got the Holy Ghost, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I went from the church all the way downtown to tell him that I had Christ in me. Where are you? Hallelujah. Where are you? Hallelujah. Oh, we already got worship. two already want, want more of God. To Why be satisfied with crumbs to when you get the bread of heaven? Christ in you. To the hope of glory. Thank God for his goodness. What a message tonight. Do we, uh, anybody want to be a pillar? Who in there want to be a pillar? Raise your hand if you want to be a pillar. Pillar is what works. Thank you, Jesus. When we get through baptizing this, those kids, two candidates we're going to form a, 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 a praying line Bishop Singleton is going to pray for the sick anybody in here sick need some prayer 
God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. Everybody sing it. Oh, Bishop. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. can cut the music down if you will get ready for your healing. I'm coming down. And if you believe and you bring faith with you like the woman that had the issue of blood, if you notice what Jesus said, your faith have made you whole. Somebody touched me and the virtue went out, but your faith, I got to give, but do you have the faith to receive the virtue coming from me? If you that way, start a line over here. Now, if you don't have the faith, just sit down and go home and take your medication. Ain't no need of jumping up here. And you still got to take your medication. But if you're ready to get rid of your medication, get in that line. God is a healer. And it's all in his word. But you got to come with something. You can't come here with your mind all messed up. If you want what you need from this God, get in the line over there and let me come down and touch you. You won't leave here the way you came. But if you don't believe, you're going to leave here by the way that you came. Deacon, control the line wherever they are. Where are we going to put them, Bishop? Oh, Bishop. Side over there, over there. <laughs> now, I would be very silly 